pole building the world's largest offshore wind farm. Dual Britannia. All this week on Wake Up To Money. Listen every morning from quarter past five or subscribe to the podcast with the BBC Sounds app. Must listen. The Five Live Late Show. So welcome to Must Listen. Every Monday we go through some of the best podcasts out there. After half past, I'm going to be interviewing journalist Gavin Esler about his new podcast detailing how Vladimir Putin became the richest man in Russia, possibly the world. But uh, first, we're going to talk about other history podcasts. And Claire Freeman is freelance podcast producer. She's got a list. She's checked it it twice. Hello, (laughs) Freeman. All right, Lloyd. (laughs) Um, So... (laughs) I'll admit, I know it's a really popular category of podcasting, but it's not something I've delved into much. Me neither. I have to say, when I went to school, I always picked geography over history. Mm. Every single time. I love my travelling. I'm not a girl that goes around museums. But history, Um, you know... uh, Is a geography podcast, by the way, are they a big subcategory? I don't know, there's travel ones, isn't there? Of course, I'll save that for you next time. All right, okay. I can't whip that out right now. Yeah. But history, you know, I mean, once I kind of take away the, um, I don't know, like the the word history and just think... It conjures up like learning kings and queens and dates of battles. 1485 was the uh, Battle of Bosworth. Well, I mean, I had to learn about the Aztecs. What use of that is my life, Mm. knowing about the Aztecs, which I can't remember anything. But I think that's more the point, isn't it? It's it's how little of this stuff you remember. Yeah, and how you're just not really that. But, excited by it. But, but really, these it's are great bringing stories. history to life on these podcasts, yeah, right? Yeah. They're I've, doing it right. What kind of happened was that I've, um, there's so many great fiction podcasts out there right now. They're getting better and better and better because it used to be that podcasts were, you know, no discredit, but it was a, probably a few nerdy boys talking about football in their bedroom many years ago and it's just exploded to kind of there is literally a podcast about everything so the fiction stuff I think has really got quite exciting it's um one you know stuff where you want to wear headphones it's binaural um and it's just great writing and that's what kind of led me into the category of history so when I knew I was coming I had to like go and find some really exciting funny laughable curious, you know, interesting stuff that I could kind of slap on the table for you, Jeff. Well, let's slap the first one on that table. Uh, It's the History Chicks. Um, What can you tell me about this? (laughs) Okay. Initially, when you listen to this, you're like, oh, my God. It's a bunch of screechy women discussing history. It sounds absolutely awful. However, um, what I really like is it's a bit rough around the edges. I don't necessarily always like the perfect polished stuff. Um, It is two women who are crazy about history. They just get together. The quality is a bit weird. I don't even know if they do it together or they're down the line on Skype or something. Um, But they pick out a woman from history, either someone who's well known or not, and they just kind of take it in turns. It sounds a bit scripted. But the um, the first episode, uh, I've listened to a few of their stuff, but the first episode I ever listened to was this one. And would you believe it? It's not about people like uh, Queen Mary of Scots. It is about Barbie. Wow. OK, let's listen. This is a clip from episode 116 uh, where the, the, uh, the, the women, the duo that Claire is telling us about, describe some of the early stumbling blocks encountered by Ruth Handler, who, as Claire says, uh, Barbie is what we're learning about here. Ruth Handler, here's one for your pub quiz, invented the Barbie doll. So Ruth, in addition to the unstable Jack Ryan, um, actually went out and found and hired an industrial psychologist to figure out how to get this admittedly statuesque doll past the moms you know the little girls seem to be in in this focus group but they were immediately down with barbie but the moms are like i don't think so this is not appropriate so the industrial psychologist determined that here was the strategy to get past the gatekeepers Barbie will teach your girls refinement. Barbie will teach your girls how to behave. It will allow her to practice being a woman in a safe environment. Oh, said the mom is okay. And we have our strategy. 
<laughs> that was the marketing strategy. But the manufacturing strategy, they had to make it as inexpensively as possible. The Built Lily doll was made of hard plastic, but Mattel wanted Barbie to be made of a softer plastic, which required a different type of manufacturing process in Japan. Mattel had been having a lot of their toys made in Japan. It was just cheaper and the workmanship was high. And so Jack took this doll to Japan and said, learn how to make this. And they did. When the first samples came back from Japan made from the built Lily doll, Jack had to file off the nipples. <laughs> oh dear. Um, <laughs> we can't have that. No, no, no. <laughs> so Barbie made her commercial debut at the annual toy fair in 1959 in a wedding gown for extra respectability. <laughs> and the buyers gave her a hard pass. It was the scary, scary boobies. <laughs> well, poor Ruth had a turbulent spring, a terrible spring. Barbie was basically a failure. All those years spent dreaming, all those years spent engineering her, and no one understood. Even her husband was not a fan. His surprise level was zero when Barbie didn't catch on, though he was there for her when she broke down. She didn't cry a lot, but this really broke her. So I can, I can hear what you're saying. Uh, this is the History Chicks, episode 116. I can hear what you're saying about it having a slightly sort of scripted feel to it, mm. but they really throw a lot of enthusiasm and uh, you could you can tell they love the subject. The detail that they go into. I mean, I couldn't listen to their episodes in one go. I have to break it down a little bit because it's like, whoa, a lot of information coming at my face right now. But... Even like the things like the daughter, um, Ruth's daughter, Barbara, was where Barbie kind of came Amazing. from. But they fell out for years and years. Barbara didn't want anything to do with Barbie. Um, it was to do with the, the nipples being filed off, I think. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> but, you know, just the, the detail. And I, and I think I really respect that because, um, you know, I, I, there's a space in the podcast world for these perfect polished documentary sounding stuff which we'll get into a little bit later but there's also something about when you've got passion and that's truly what a great podcast is about for me it's, it's not about that perfection it is about having passion and not worrying about all the fancy studios and equipment um, I've, I've told you the story. one I'm obsessed with which actually now I think of it is a history podcast but I told I mentioned this to you Claire I'm sure the the atomic hobo oh yeah Okay, okay, it's a history podcast. I'll, I'll quickly mention it, but it's uh, a, a Scottish academic called Julie McDowell who is obsessed, like many people of my age. So, if you're born in the 70s, but maybe a bit before, a bit after, you, you grew up with this fear of the nuclear bomb. And it's a podcast about what would have happened if the bomb dropped and the public information films and all the records and bit of pop bits of pop culture, like When the Wind Blows and Threads that was around at the time. And it's just her talking. She, she you know, writes the episode and then tells you what would have happened according to her research. But what's great about it is she's so passionate and slightly phobic, so you can hear her <laughs> terrifying herself as it goes on. But you're right, you know, thousands of pounds per episode can be thrown at some of the high-end podcasts, which sound as highly produced as anything you've ever heard on Radio 4, and yet some of the best ones are just enthusiastic people, you know, telling you about what they know. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, that kind of leads into the next one, because um, this one is one that I just found, you know, sometimes you, you're a bit curious, you're looking for the next thing to listen to, a bit like, you know, when you finished a book and you're thinking, oh, I'm going on holiday soon, yeah. what book shall I read? I end up doing that with podcasts. I'm going on a long drive, what shall I listen to? And the picture of the logo jumped out at me, it just said 1865. Um, and I didn't know anything about what happened in America in 1865. I've got to be honest, as I said earlier, history is not my strong point. Um, and uh, this is embarrassing to admit on air. However, I did not know that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. Hang on, you knew Abraham Lincoln was assassinated? No, I didn't. You thought he lived happily ever after? I don't know how he died. And was buried with his hat? I didn't know how he died. Right. I mean, it's, I'd, it's I've, fine. I've never studied American politics. I just knew that there was a dude called American, um, American Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, and he was president at some point. Didn't know when. I would fail in a pub quiz. I, d I don't blame you. Society's to blame for that. <laughs> Hold on, your knowledge. But there. the good thing is, when I found this podcast, which is half fictionalised and half kind of explained... Um, which I'll explain a bit more in a second. I don't know how it's going to end. 
that's the one good thing. <laughs> Whereas normally with history, you know what's kind of going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it starts at the bit, the obvious bit, uh, the president's been assassinated. And uh, it links into a chap called Edwin Stanton, who has a significant role in history. You're probably cringing right now listening at home thinking she doesn't know that. But for me, it's all just characters. We've all got gaps in our knowledge. Don't judge Claire I'll, Freeman. I'll do the quiz <laughs> for you in a second. Well, shall, shall we hear the, the launch trailer for this podcast, 1865? Yeah. Telegram, April 15th, 1865. Abraham Lincoln died this morning at 22 minutes after 7 o'clock. Christ almighty, we are in the middle of a coup, Marshal. Find and secure the vice president now. Right away, sir. Who? The actor? He's involved in this mess? With Lincoln gone, who will hold the South accountable? There is no one left, Major. Only this office and those who command it. You and I are something of an arranged marriage, Stanton. I didn't choose you and you didn't choose me. I don't know if Johnson's a bumbling fool or something much more insidious. That man is no Abraham Lincoln. He's dangerous. Andrew Johnson is complicit in the murder of Abraham Lincoln. Mr. President, Edwin Stanton has an agenda. I'm going to force Lincoln's reconstruction policy down Johnson's throat. The plan is a Trojan horse, Mr. President. And what's waiting inside? The people want blood, Mr. President. I'm going to give it to them, with or without your support. Mr. President, it confounds me. You can't see what's happening right under your very nose. I know it's a problem problem you were supposed to have under control. This is from the president. I know what it is, Major. A direct order from President Lincoln. No one can know about this. Secretary Stanton, how did he die? Did he suffer? Miss Hale, please. <laughs> I swear, until every loyalist Southern general who refuses to stand down is eviscerated, until the will of the Southern cause is crushed beneath our feet, until the head of Jefferson Davis is delivered to me on a spike, no corner will be given. They have killed our father. Bring me their heads. I enjoyed that. Oh, you know, even the music, like as soon as I hear, I think it's a viola, not even a violin. Um, and it just it just brings like the hairs at the back of my neck. Um, and I feel what you've done there is basically said to the listener, look, I might not have known that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. However, I can tell the difference between a viola and a violin. <laughs> I've just redeemed a bit of my IQ right there. But I, I like this. I like, I like this idea of if you've got gaps in your general knowledge or your knowledge of history, then you can fill them in with these podcasts. I mean, that's I, I, the point. Yeah, it's, it's it's the way of kind of informing you. And I feel like Claire, as a what in 1939, Germany invaded Poland. Really? You will not believe what happened oh next. Oh my goodness! Someone podcast needs to do a coming podcast. Soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So um, the thing about this, right, And because I mentioned about the passion thing before, I, I, maybe I'm trying to find out more about the people who've made this. And um, because I, I get the feeling they did a they did like a bonus episode just after like episode five of this, where they had the uh, executive producer and sound designer, uh, Lindsey Graham, um, who is the, the kind of narrating voice on this just kind of talk about how they made it, how they went about making this into a radio drama. Um, and, you know, like borrowing a friend's house and recording all like the sound effects and just borrowed the house for like a day. Um, you know, the music that they made and the writers who they worked with, they were guys who'd been working on this subject for 15 years and they'd made theatre plays, but then they reworked it. They spent two and a half years reworking it into a podcast series, which then by the time they kind of done the podcast series, they had to rewrite their theatre play because they thought, oh, crap, we've kind of got loads of this wrong. Um, but what I like about when they approach the podcast series is the the episodes come in two parts. So there's like a episode one um, and then there's an inside episode one. You know how you kind of get right. the, the... A bit break. like at the end of David Attenborough documentaries when they show you the cameraman. Yeah, but it's a kind of separate mini episode um, like loads of the TV shows have these days, like, I don't know, West Wing. Episodes. Like a sort of making or, of. Yes, absolutely. And so they get what them. Um, there's a producer, Rob, and a couple of the writers who discuss within that last episode what was real and what was artistic license. 
So you can really kind of start to build where they filled in some of the gaps of what they think had happened right. um, and how they kind of made and constructed some of the scenes. So you feel like you're kind of learning in real life. And as a producer, I'm always a nerd and I like to know, well, how did they do that? Um, so I, I kind of feel like it's a double whammy on learning like about the you know the the artist and the art itself and how it's being created but clearly these guys are super passionate you know the the actors as well are local actors to them in Dallas Texas um they and... sounded good as well cuz often i find audio drama can sound a bit like amdram um, but I thought that sounded really impressive just, just in that clip. Yeah, the, 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 the guys um, who've made this is Airship Productions. And actually, I've already uh, looked into other of their, their um, series to go and find out about. And I think that they're now working with Wondery, um, who are a huge um, company in the podcast production world. Uh, but it, honestly, just super, super fascinating. It's, it's blown my mind. I'm only about uh, halfway through. And I'm already excited because when I drive home tonight, I've already got the next episode lined up. But I don't know how it's going to end. That's the best bit. Podcast guru Claire Freeman is here for this week's Must Listen. That was 1865. Next, we're talking about The Dollop, um, who I, I believe we talked to in this slot last week. Um, and we've got a clip to play for you first, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. And uh, in this clip, you hear Dave tell some of the story of a famous woman from history born, Emmeline Goulden. Back in Manchester, she fell in love with Richard Pankhurst. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what about you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 for those of you who don't know, buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Emmeline was 20, Richard was 44. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, that is hey. low. Yeah. Wow. What hey. wouldn't they talk about? <laughs> uh, he was very well known in Manchester. He was a, a, a barrister, as you guys call it, mm -hmm. which is a weird word. Sure. Uh, a member of the National Association of, for the Promotion of Social Science, uh, okay. The Royal Statistical Society, the Manchester Chamber of Commerce, on and on. He's, okay. a, he's a man about town. Yeah, yeah. All right, move or shake her. 44. Yeah, she's 44. 20. She's 20. Going. I'm still thinking about mm. the age. Yep. Mm. Uh, he believed in redistribution of wealth. What? Nas <laughs> nationalized land. <laughs> Abolishing the monarchy. <laughs> he didn't do it. <laughs> Spoiler. These are still... Yeah, none of those have happened. Yeah, it's, it's an exciting it's thing. It's actually getting worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that women should be able to vote. Okay. That hasn't happened either. Uh, so they got married, and uh, she cranked out five kids pretty quick. Uh, cranked hurts, but keep going. Cranked. Yeah, she's not, uh, like, jack-in-the-box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you don't know how Jack in the Box works, do you? Turn a crank. <laughs> uh, it's pretty hard to not understand how a Jack in the Box works. Uh, so there we go, a clip of the dollop. <laughs> how, how often do they do live episodes? It seems to be quite a lot, actually. They do huge tours. They're just, uh, they were in the UK last year, so that particular episode was recorded somewhere in the UK. I think it was one in London. Uh -huh. um, but they are touring through the States at the moment. But they do actually do some of the stuff uh, in the studio. And, I mean, the, the concept of it is really simple. They're two comedians, Gareth and Dave, and one of them will know that like the person that they're going to talk about and the other one just has to listen and just react off the cuff. And it just, I mean, just the weird voices that come out. And just that particular episode, I, I kind of wanted to pick out. That was one of my favourites in a while, actually, because many people who live in the UK, you know, I live in Manchester. I know, um, you know, a, a little bit about the history of the Pankhurst family here. Um, but hearing two Americans kind of tear it apart yeah 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 <laughs> just is you know it does really give you a different perspective and the things that you kind of remember that they tell you 
Like, actually, I didn't know that Emmeline Pankhurst was married to someone who was 20 years older. You know, so it's it's kind of those weird little details that you end up remembering. Whereas when you read a history book, you're going to remember other more factual details, just random stuff in this. You just think, well, you know, that that'll be good for a dinner party fact in years to come, I'm sure. So it's a, a bit of stand up history. I just like kind of one. for me that that has been a particular favorite if I was doing like chores around the house. It, like, you know, a couple of days ago, I actually did my washing up. I hate washing up, but that made it definitely more enjoyable listening and doing washing up to that. Time to mention just one more uh, podcast, um, which is going to be tonight's guest, Gavin Esler, who is hosting a new podcast called The Big Steel. What can you tell us about this one? So, um, I'm really excited to listen to your interview on this because this is an, a podcast series which has come out today, I understand. So it's hot off the press. Um, Fresh Air Production, um, who were the guys behind making um, The Big Steel is the name of it, um, are guys who have kind of been in the UK podcast scene for quite a while. They just won a, a podcast production company of the year at the Audio Production Awards. Um, and they kind of do a lot of branded stuff, but also are dipping into documentaries. And this is super exciting about kind of looking into the, the history, the politics, the corruption that happens within Russia. Um, I'd learned a fact today, um, which I uh, did not know. I, you know, I want to wow you with it. Maybe you already knew this, but Russia has 11 time zones. I, I, I only know that fact because I presumably, like you, have listened to the episode of the podcast. Oh, come on. Give me some credit. <laughs> I thought that was a really good fact. It is a great fact. I also was fascinated to hear that um, Russia has an economy about the size of Italy's. Wow. See, I mean, it's just it's, it, when you actually look at Russia on a map, it's a huge country. Um, and there are so many different stories within it. So, I mean, whilst episode one has landed, I think, this evening for the big steal, I have got that ready to listen to on my holiday over the next couple of weeks as I kind of, you know, binge listen. To... You're not going to Russia, are you? You could be incarcerated I for don't... listening to something critical of Putin. I'm not going to Russia. It's OK. But, right. um, yeah, I look forward to listening to your interview uh, with Gavin about this because uh, from the trailer that I've listened to, which I know you're going to play anyway, it sounds super exciting and there's a lot more to the story behind Vladimir Putin than we all first thought. All right, Claire Freeman, thank you so much for all your recommendations on history for this week's Must Listen. Uh